If you're a mango otaku, then odds are you've already heard of Fumi Yoshinaga. And odds are if you're watching this, then you're also a mango otaku. And if you're a mango otaku, then you need to read Flower of Life, which is by an otaku for the otaku. Now, Flower of Life has two things about it that usually turn me off to most manga of this type. High Schoolers and Slice of Life. Slice of Life series tend to be about characters I have nothing in common with, and they follow plot lines that don't interest me, and I quickly drop them. High schoolers and manga simply tend to annoy me. High school is not like that for me, so once again, I don't care and the series gets dropped. But Fumi Yoshinaga seems to be a master of making things that should be boring a lot of fun to read, and by making the main characters otaku, it sucked me right in. However, this manga is not a bunch of high schoolers sitting around making references to other series. The characters are otaku, but the story is not necessarily about being one. We start off meeting our main character, Harutaro, as he shows up to start school one month late. The reason he so proudly announces to the class? Yep, and he seems all too happy to tell the world about his recent battle with leukemia. But the manga never belittles this to make it a running joke. It treats the topic with dignity and respect. This is a comedy, but it's not one that plays it safe like something for American television, but it's not one that makes jokes at the expenses of things that are not funny. With the exception of Harutaro, who is still a buddy no taku, every single one of the other main characters is a living, breathing trope. Let's start with Shigeru Sensei, the most flamingly gay-looking teacher on the face of the planet involved in the love affair with another teacher. More than enough yaoi jokes will butt off Shigeru Sensei's love affairs during the series, but the humor comes in such a way to make you laugh and not make you say, I HATE YAOI FANGIRLS WITH A PASSION! And just when you're comfortable, Yoshinaga is so talented that she can switch from using this character for comedy to really good drama that you can't help but get sucked into. Then there's Mikuni, the cute Shotaro boy that almost everyone in the series, regardless of gender, seems to treat as a giant, cuddly teddy bear. He becomes best friends with Harutaro, and the joint nerd of eventually leads to a plotline in which they attempt to create a manga themselves and can give some rather interesting look-sees into the world of manga creation in Japan. Next there's Majima, a walking encyclopedia of otaku nerdom and a massive, massive jerk. He seems to know more than enough about every genre, but once again, Yaoi gets an odd dissection as Majima tries to profit from it by incorporating every trope you can imagine into a story. If you've never read a Yaoi before, Majima has essentially spoiled the character types of just about every single one ever created. And to hit the otaku character's home, we have Takeda, who has been drawing a 70s style shoujo epic in her notebooks, which Majima finds and naturally shares with every other otaku in the entire school. The impressive amount of parody packed into these four volumes, the plot is never rushed. The plot itself is a bit hard to describe as several threads go on at the same time. First we have Harutaru and his after-leukemia battle thing. Then there's a love triangle, Shigeru Sensei choosing between two equally bad choices of men. Then Haruto and Mikuni are making a manga, and they would like to go to comic Head with it. Then everyone is nerding out to manga at some point while becoming closer as a class. And the craze of Takeda's epic-growing manga will take front and center stage during many chapters. For as largely unrelated as these plot points might sound, they blend together beautifully and keep any one particular point from getting too boring. Yoshinaga is also talented from switching to comedy to drama at the drop of a hat without it seeming awkward or lazy. Given that this is mostly a slice of life, liking the characters is usually more important than the story, but neither aspect is skimped on. It may be easy to call most of the characters trope spokesmen, and at many times they are, but for such a short manga you get to learn a lot about them and actually give a damn before all is said and done. Sometimes things will be borderline on melodramatic rather than just dramatic, but for never being cheesy, I'll let it slide. Flower of Life is complete at four volumes long, and all are available from DMP at $13 each. At $13 a volume, it is more than worth a buy, and this is a series you should consider dedicating a shrine to while you're at it. Volume 4 is the trickiest volume to find, and I was unable to find it on either Borders.com or Amazon, so the best place to try and get it is at a convention or a site dedicated to anime or manga, like The Right Stuff or JustManga.com.